what happened? I can't see anything. Hey, watch it. <laughs> the unused classroom. How did we get here? This place looks like it's been seen by our days. Hey, Chris. What? What just happened? Like, that wasn't a dream or anything, was it? Anyway, as I was saying, I just tell Alvis that we couldn't find any chalk. Very the unused classroom, and we're back in the re real world. Back to our own two dollars. Yeah, a, it's a new stuff in inventory. We have a ball of junk. Ball of junk. A small ball of accumulated things. You looked at the funk junk ball in admiration. Nothing happened. You have an egg. <laughs> egg. Not too important, not too unimportant. And a piece of glass. <laughs> There's a small shard of something in your pocket. It feels like glass, but... But what? <laughs> we get to learn what that means in the future. I don't remember what it says in chapter 2. You look through the glass. For some strange reason, for just a brief moment, you thought you saw through your hand. <laughs> Interesting. Egg. Alright. Stats. Our weapon is now Halloween pencil. In our arm, we have a bandage on his armor. Oops, sorry. I slept in my chair there for a second. Chris, whatever have you been doing? I sat in the car waiting for you out of school for half an hour. I called and called, but you never picked up. You had your poor mother worried sick. Chris, I am afraid I am going to have to punish you. Huh? A friend? You were spending time with a friend? <laughs> Chris, I will make an exception this time. You can continue your adventures a little longer. But when you return home... You are going to have to go to bed early. See you soon, honey. It's refreshing doing a higher pitch voice after all the deep voices in the dark world. <coughs> Chris, honey, what is it? What? No, I am not giving you a ride home. Our house is not far. It is just at the top of town. Try walking. It builds character, honey. You're so funny, mother. You're very funny. Alright then. <coughs> So the unused classroom here. It's a big orange colored door. The door is locked. It almost seems like it'll never open again. <laughs> There's a purple checker rug. It's got a bunch of red bricks on it. A bunch of cards. It's a worn down stuffed animal. It's almost kind of like a cat. Some play blocks. I don't know. It's like a half a style puzzle right here. It's a light switch. It's a light switch. <clears throat> Got a checkerboard. There are pawns strewn on it. Ch chess pieces and a checkerboard. I wonder how that works. A bunch more cards. There's a cabinet here. Things stacked high up. Playing cards spread out of a deck in the closet. Also, bold and brash here. No. It's a yellow, poorly drawn picture of a green turtle. It's signed Elvin. <laughs> but where are the chipmunks? Looks like there's a poster here at one point as well. So, everything we saw in the dark world there appears to be represented in this room. There's the great door, the field of hopes and dreams with its red trees, and then the red trees of the Scarlet Forest, his doll is Sham, got the great board. I think there'll be more carpet over here for the rest of the forest, and Card Castle's apparently this cabinet. <laughs> Quite interesting. Step out. Man, the sun's already setting. What's up? Why did you... Chris, why were you on the phone in there? Everyone else must have gone home by now. <laughs> Guess Al was no better to, than to ask us next time, huh? This ambient is nice. Well, 
Guess we should go. See you later, I guess. Chris? <laughs> Let's go back there tomorrow, alright? Little smile of reassurance. Alright then, Suze. See you tomorrow. See you in a few years. I guess all the way to the school we had to get to you last time, in the beginning of the chapter. Door's locked. Now, I always thought that this this door right here was Gerson's classroom. Like, the classroom that Gerson used to teach in. But some people think it's, like, the room that Alvis teaches in, which, if you go down here, is where we started the chapter. Some people, some people say that Gerson taught in the classroom that Alvis teaches in now. I don't know, has, has there ever been official text stating what, what deal is with that? Anyways, you check the time. It seems to not be time for class. <laughs> that time works. The computer is turned off. Everything felt peaceful for a moment. Yeah, it, it, it's it, it's this this little bit of tech is strangely true in this modern society of ours. Put your roses. <clears throat> Motivational quotes. Astral Wolf. <laughs> Get anything out of her desk? Nope. All right. I don't I don't believe there's much to see in school right now. It's mostly just. Is there? We can go to Toriel's classroom. Miss Toriel has written in cursive on the dry erase board. It seems like it hasn't been erased in a very long time. Like I have a small dry erase board I got a while back, and I wrote something on it, and it was just on there for a long time. Then when I went to try and erase it more recently, it was really caked on there. I had to really erase it hard. I don't get to use whiteboards very often. I have like some sketches I did in white on whiteboards in school. The teacher let me do. I have a picture that I'll show on the screen there. It's right here. Scented markers. Yes. You dig out the marshmallow one and start huffing it. Nah. Chocolate one smells too fake anyway. I was never much a fan of smell of markers, but I am one of those people who made the marker swords occasionally whenever I got the chance. It was cool. <laughs> it's a computer. This dust up wallpaper is you and your brother dressed up for Halloween eight years ago. The memories. <clears throat> Some kind of teacher food. It's like a fish tank in here. It's a poster of several basic shapes circle, oval, square, hyperdodecahedron. A classic. <laughs> Kids' books. Some that used to be yours. Here. It's a primitive drawing of your mom. The resemblance is uncanny. Because there's only six desks here in the, in the kindergarten classroom. Some kind of primitive sculpture. Who knows what it represents? I can make a joke here, but really, Scow did better in his playthroughs. Or Scow, well, rather, he prefer. You want to see a joke about that? Go, go see his playthrough. <laughs> the throne of the gods. Quick count. How many chairs are there in that? One, two, three, four, five. There are five chairs there. Remember that for later. I want you to remember that for, for later. <laughs> you ran the water fountain. It's lukewarm. You ran the water fountain. It's tepid. It's refreshingly cool. I haven't used school of water fountains very much. <laughs> now, we're out in town. I spent a whole lot of time just looking around the school building. There's a whole town to actually look at here. With all these lovely autumn trees. And here's the live Barbie. Let's go inside. <laughs> Birdly with his head on backwards like an owl. <laughs> Chris, you survived Susie? I was getting worried. Now you can finally pay off your family debt. How to draw a dragon this 2,583 days overdue. However, Chris, I'm a benevolent volunteer assistant. If you turn it in this week, I'll reduce your fine to... A mere $64.23. Consider it, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Bertley. <coughs> oh, did you forget what it looks like? I find it's perhaps a mauve dragon wearing lipstick. <laughs> as, for clo as for her clothes, I believe they are, well, you know, Chris, I think you'll know when you see it. <laughs> if I could clock you over the head with a book. Chris, what's up? Candy's working, so I'm starting 
on our project. I've always copied a couple bunch of pictures. It's the same picture of a soccer ball 73 times. You could say I'm having a ball. Ha ha ha! Ah, Jogginton. Classic. Got a good colleague. So, Temp Stubby. Hired. God, I can't do a Temp voice right now. <coughs> she's, re she's reading a comic full of hot demon guys. How much do you want to bet that Temmie Chang does that in real life, on occasion? Anyways. It's a crude drawing of an ice cube wearing a headband. A teen zone, where teens can be kids. The feeling of immense relief watches over you. I still don't get what that means. Can someone explain it to me in the comments? There's an anime review. Read it. You decide not to read it. Now, Chris, I'm forcing you to read this. <laughs> Teen's Corner. Uh, monthly tune review. Yumi Kissy 2. This reviewer had Mimi 2 as her first ex exposure to the series. And let her tell you, it makes Mimi 1 look like a dumpster with sparkly cat ears. With a darker storyline and more mature themes, the second one treats the reviewer like a real adult, instead of like an animal that would die if it goes on 10 seconds without seeing a beach ball. Uh, and not to mention, Mimi's character in the first one <coughs> is more stale than the ramen I eat at home by myself with the lights off. Teens and older should check out this dark masterpiece. It's signed the anonymous yellow lizard. Gee, I wonder who that could be. Like there's only so many of those around. Some people will say that this might be an allegory for the comparison between Undertale and Delta Room. Maybe it could be. You never know. Toby's just wacky like that. I love reading books, especially the books upstairs. You should really read them. I love reading books, especially the books. Now this guy right here, this guy appears to be the regular version of one of the Gaster followers you see. You can see in Undertale. We all at first saw he looked like a big old face sticking out of the ground, but no, it appears he was actually a bird. Here's an interesting little trivia for you right there, if you didn't know that. Now, isn't that interesting? Isn't that wizard? Then, computer lab. Please surf the web responsibly. In fact, maybe don't do it at all. You look. In th you look through the window to the computer lab. There seems to be a dog inside working at a computer. Seems like it's making a game. Hmm. Seems like you should it shouldn't interrupt it. Hmm. Seems like when the game's finished, you can go in. Hmm. You just have to trust a dog. Trust him, we do. We all got his newsletter on. You know you have his newsletter on as well. Yeah, let's look at some books. It's an unlabeled book. You look inside. Uh, I accidentally returned my personal journal instead of my book. Oh no, they're putting it into the catalog. Oh no, I have to take it out every time I want to write a new entry. I thought it was going to be a second text there. There's a book here. You lick the page. It's delicious! This must be what they meant by flavor text. Good joke, Toby. Good joke. Please remember my name. Please, I wrote a book to help you remember. By Hot's Fire Guy. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's not actually what his name was in Undertale, though. Like, feed yourself, edit on screen. What was his name? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, Lord of the Hammer, first in the award-winning fiction series by lauded historian Gerson Boone. Oh, Gerson. Alright then. Police Chief Undyne is supposed to be directing traffic, but all she's doing is standing in the middle of the street yelling, Get out of my way! She's the best, huh? I feel really directed. You're not doing a good job of following the direction, though. How am I supposed to get past this, this blue lady? I'm stuck. I guess I should just run away. Please, Chief Undyne. Okay. As long as you don't go shooting up a restaurant because you want breakfast. Please. Hey, punk! Get out of the road! You're blocking traffic! Oh, wait. It's just an escort's kid. 
<laughs> it's, 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 it's interesting that Undyne immediately associate us with Asgore instead of Toriel. Sorry, I'm a little, uh, worked up lately. This job is so boring. Nothing ever happens in this town. Ugh, I just wish something would shake things up. Huh? You got something to report? Uh, could I help you? Oh, you want to help me? Sure, punk. Get some to rob the bank so I can suplex them. Do we even have a bank? Hey, get someone to build a bank. I mean, I think we can buy some shops in town we can work with. Got something to report? Alphys. Alphys? Who is Alphys? No idea who you're talking about. Why? Did they do something illegal? Gotcha! If I see Alphys, I'll tackle them. Boo-hoo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> They're as good as dead. Yeah, give her a good old glomp. I never got that term. Where did that term come from? When did we start using the term glomp? Don't do anything illegal, you little punk. And let me know if you get a lead in any purple girls. There's one one, and there's several counts of comic mischief. She's a girl behind the slaughter. Anyways. Dark World. What? There's a Dark World inside the school? Uh, sure, kid. There's no law against Dark Worlds anyway. That's a job for the school board. Right. So an interesting thing about Undyne here, in Undertale, she was the head of the Royal Guard, the Royal Guard of, A of Asgore. And here, it doesn't really seem like any place around here for there prefer to be royals, so instead she's a police officer, and also she has both eyes. She doesn't, she doesn't, have, she doesn't have an eye patch, so that's interesting. Anyways, police. You knocked on the door to this police station. Someone's coming up to the window. They just closed the blinds. Seems like the police aren't really feeling it right now. Oh, they need a break every now and then. People always break in laws. <laughs> police tape is blocking the way. The tape simply reads, Yeah! Yeah, I wonder. Clearly this is just a barrier Toby created so that we can't act us or whatever's past here until a later chapter. Like, what could have happened for Undyne to take it off like this? Also, there's, there's one tape and two wood barriers here. Remember that. Remember that for later. The hospital's there. I'm gonna wait on that for a second. Go this way first. Town Hall. The mayor's charisma is about zero. No, it's negative. But she works hard and has a good track record, so she runs unopposed. That's politics, really. Sorry for the cut right there, something just happened. It is a politics bear from Snowden in Undertale. Not only does she act icy, she always keeps her office's AC on full blast. The chill I feel. Is... is this what politics feels like? Maybe. <laughs> it's a small pine tree. No decorations though. It's a painting of the town. How lovely. It's a chair. Maybe it's into politics. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The mirror is busy right now. Sorry, I got interrupted there again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The mirror is busy right now. If you need to see her, please try causing some terrible crisis. Maybe later. Hey, short stuff. Why would you possibly need to see talk to the mayor? Your allowance too low? Ate too much candies? Lost your frisbee in the wash? Hey, short stuff. That's what the cops are for. What? Don't talk to you like you're a kid? Fine. If you need someone to change your diaper, go ask the cops. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Are you here to complain about your teacher? If you don't like her, please blame your mother for getting her hired. Sorry, something just, something just disconnected on my computer. I'll check what it was later. And it's like, how many candidates were there even for this te teaching position that Alphys is in right now? <laughs> Chris, what a pleasant surprise to see you here. You know, on a school day. There must be a reason that you came here at such a time. I, Father Alvin, implore you, if you have anything weighing your ma on your mind, please speak. Fruit juice. Chris, if you want some more sick fruit juice, you should come to our service. Our choir sounds a bit thinner since your brother went away. Chris, it would be wonderful if you could sing, you would sing with us. But we participated to any extent, instead of just trying to drink the fruit juice. I understand. I hope you're in time you may find the words you seek. 
Let the Indigo's power light your way. Excuse me, sorry. There's a church here in town. And this is Father Alvin. When I first saw this, I thought he was a girl because of his pink eyebrows and his pink shawl. It's a bit... You know, just, just like the just like first thing you see, the first thing you think. You know, he's a dude. His father, Alvin. He's, for some reason, he has a pink shawl. And he seems to be related to Gerson. And the turtle monsters. There's not that many of those. So you look at the upper part of the church. There's a delta rune. There's just one really big triangle underneath. And over here, <clears throat> you have a graveyard. A cool overhead shadow effect. Here's graves. Shira, a karaoke microphone for a brave singer. Mutler, a big bone for the leader of the pack. Christo, a snowy gemstone for a proud mother. Gerson. Renowned historian, author, and teacher. Curse is not around anymore. He's passed before the game even started. He was a nice guy in Undertale. Curse and Boom Memorial Bench. Throughout my career, some of my best ideas came from dreams. Take a rest here. If anyone asks, you're writing. A nice little memorial bench for him. Ugh. It just hits a little close to home, really. Do you know why I was in hiatus recently? Anyways, I'm not gonna talk about that here. Anyways, 